Uh, good evening to all, uh, and to all a good evening. Uh, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Uh, why? Because God is good, and his mercy endureth forever. And I will always give him praise, honor, and glory for who he is in my life. I also want to honor uh, pastor of this wonderful ministry, uh, the best pastor on this side of heaven, and that is my pastor, Bishop Dwayne C. Tisdale um, of the Friendship Baptist Church. I also want to, last but not least, I uh, want to honor you and thank you. Um, in unwinding this evening as you uh, listen to prayerfully a fresh word um, that was given to me uh, that I will, I'm, I'm excited to share with you on tonight, uh, this evening during our Bible study moment and hour. And so before we get started, I do want to pray um, and then we'll dive into our lesson. Is, is that okay? Alrighty, I'm trying to I'm trying to take a deep breath um, and relax a little bit uh, so that I can be prepared to deliver uh, the word to you. So let's pray. Uh, Father God, we just first of all want to honor your presence. We want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of a day that you have made. Um, I want to bless you and, and thank you for allowing us to be in your will um, and in your presence uh, on this evening. So as we unwind, Allow a word to be received that will energize the inner man, the inner spirit, uh, that will not just energize the spirit, but will give direction and revelation on the next step that is needed uh, to move forward on this journey in our relationship with you. And so I thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm asking that you decrease Johnny so that he is not heard or seen, but that you be seen and heard through him through me. And so I just bless you and give your name praise, honor, and glory for all that you do and will continue to do uh, for myself and for your people. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, family, the last time I was with you, we were discussing and had laid the foundation of understanding the difference between our talents and our gifts. And so we're going to, tonight, we're going to dive and unpack it a little bit more and dive a little bit deeper. I did to share with you uh, with what God has shared with me. And so let's, let's look at our scripture we're going to focus in on tonight. Um, I got the clicker here, so let me make sure I'm working it properly. Hey, there we go. Alrighty. Um, what you have up on the screen, what you see is the message version, but I have my worship Bible with me, the NIV version, and I want to read it. I, I didn't put it on the screen for you, but I want to read it. Have me look at this version. Uh, so I want to read this version, and then I want to go to the version that's on the screen, and we can read that together. Let me, let me read this, what I have coming out of my worship Bible, the NIV version. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14 reads as this, and we're going to read 14 through 16. It says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Amen. So that's the NIV version, but let's unpack a little bit more um, as we read the message version. You, you guys can read with me. Matthew 5, 14 through 16, the message version says, says it this way. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light. Let me say that again. You're here, your purpose, you're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. 
How many of us know that we are in a, a, a the world is in uh, some dark colors. They're, they're in a dark stage, but we have a purpose given by God. And it says this, God is not a secret to be kept. God is not a secret to be get, to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. Let me say that part again. We're going public with this. That's why the doors of the church, uh, the churches that we are in, um, have been closed because we need to take God on the outside of the four walls of where we've been worshiping and being confined to. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. I'm, I'm, I'm making you or positioning you to be seen. So the promotions um, and people calling you, I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. That's your assignment. He is charging you to shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God. Let me say that again. By opening up to others, transparency, allowing people to see um, how you are dealing with the different issues that's going on in the world around you and how you are maintaining a positive uh, attitude, still having a smile on your face. Be open to others. You'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous father in heaven. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. So let's do a quick review um, of what we discussed last time, talking about our gifts and our talents and, and how they're going to uh, been how they've been given to us uh, to be effective uh, in the, the community, be effective in this world. OK, uh, we understood the last time laying the foundation. That talent is defined as a natural aptitude or a natural tendency or skill, a natural ability. So if we were to use this in a sentence, it would just basically say he or she possesses. Let me change this so everybody's on the same page. I'm sorry. I got to learn how to work this, this clicker in my notes at the same time. So bear with me. All righty. Uh, talent. Natural aptitude, a natural tendency or skill, natural ability. He or she possesses more talent than any other player or person. Um, when, I, when I look at that definition, I think of a team. You have many people um, on a team that may play the same position. But on a team, uh, and I'll, I'll use football as an analogy, you have first string, second string, sometimes third string, fourth string. So you have um, multiple players that play the same position. Okay, so let's use a quarterback as an example. You have the first string quarterback, second string quarterback, uh, third string quarterback. They all have the same talent, but one will possess a that talent, that same talent as being better. Okay, uh, who's who has more of a natural ability of being a quarterback? Okay, um, the scripture. If you were to flip over to Matthew's twenty-five, uh, verse fifteen, we don't have to go there. Uh, but in your study time, if you want to flip over and read that verse, you will you will understand that uh, we've been given many talents. We there's there's there was one that was given five. There was one that was given. Um, Another one was given two, and then another one was given one. And so out of those talents, um, you are able to, to have a value that can be added to the talent that was given to you by God. Okay. Um, and, and what I mean by that, so uh, let's take, since we're talking about football, let's take uh, Patrick Mahone, who is a quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. 
and they, Kansas City Chiefs, won the Super Bowl last last year. So they came back around, and Patrick Mahomes' contract was up, and so they wrote him up a contract just for his one talent. Wrote him up a ten-year contract worth over five hundred and three million dollars. Five hundred and three million dollars for his one talent of being a quarterback, being able to throw the ball, but not just throw the ball, throw the ball well. They saw this talent as being valuable and they put a price tag and offered it to Patrick Mahone for his one talent. So what am I saying? God has given you something, a talent whether it be uh, playing sports, whether it be cooking, and we talked about this the last time, is it, you, you can have that talent that has value. You may not be a, a Patrick Mahone, but don't, don't disregard the value of what God has given you. So let's, let's move on because um, my time is short. Um, let's talk about uh, spiritual gifts. Let's let's re review what spiritual gifts mean. Let me click it so we're all on the same page. We're there. There we go. All right. Spiritual gift refers to an endowment or extraordinary power given by the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. Spiritual gift refers to an endowment or extraordinary or extraordinary power given by the Holy Spirit. So it's not just a fact of, so, so in other words, if I can put it this way, spiritual gift is the sauce, the special secret sauce that goes on top of your talent. So in other words, um, they just don't love Patrick Mahone. $503 million worth of just his talent. There's something else that's special about him that has opened the door for him to be blessed financially. That goes, that's not just the fact that he, he's a great, excellent quarterback. There is an endowment or an extraordinary power that was given to him that is allowing him to live up to the expectations where they saw something in him just greater than him just being an excellent quarterback for the franchise. And I'm going to dig into that. I'm, I'm going to unpack that thought. But let me finish this, this, this here. The purpose of spiritual gifts, okay, the, 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 the main focal point of spiritual gifts is to edify or build up exhort or encourage and comfort the church or the body of believers. Now, in your free time, you can read the scriptures on, on spiritual gifts. You can find it in Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians, um, and in Ephesians. But as, as, I was, as God was revealing this information to me and sharing with me, um, I, I thought about the restaurant Chick-fil-A. And because this is just Johnny, the first book of Johnny, chapter one, verse one. Um, this is perception of Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is from heaven. I don't care what anybody say. Chick-fil-A is from heaven. And y'all can argue me up and down, but I believe Chick-fil-A. Heaven, Chick Fil A, that's drive through. That and and the reason why I pick Chick Fil A is because they not only have the talent of making a good chicken sandwich, but they got the special sauce that they have added, the spiritual gifting that they have added on top of their service of fixing you a chicken sandwich or the chicken nuggets or the macaroni and cheese or the lemonade. It, it, they make a good sandwich, but they provide a uh, great and excellent service, hospitality, um, their ability to say, when you, when you step up to the register, their ability to say, how may I help? 
you know, they're never short staff. They have people all over the place serving and, and showing love. If you sit down in the restaurant, um, you, you not only is eating on a good sandwich, good chicken sandwich, but you're listening to inspirational gospel music, as I would, I would call it, inspirational music that is ministering to you while you are relaxing and filling your, your, your stomach with their good food. You know, and then you don't have to get up to go and 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 get a refill on your drink. They'll come by and ask, hey, how can I can I get you another drink? May I refill your drink? What are you having? It's that type of spiritual gift or or what a friend of mine said, put a little love on it, that they're adding to their talent that has become. And remember, we had talked about your talent is a capturing mechanism. And the gifting is your ability to pull people into the presence of God. That's what Chick-fil-A does for me. You know, I, I, I've i had excellent chicken sandwiches. They're not the only one that, that provide excellent chicken sandwiches. But I just go there sometimes just for the service uh, that they offer while I'm while I'm eating. And how many. OK, so let me put it this way. How many people have you not gone to because they've provided their talent was good, but you didn't feel like dealing with the shenanigans uh, that they offer with, with whatever service they are giving. Somebody who makes a mean uh, macaroni and cheese, but you don't, you, you don't call it. I don't feel like dealing with them, dealing with them today, or, or you'll have some, <laughs> This is what we do. We put somebody else up to doing it uh, so we don't have to deal with the shenanigans because we just we just don't feel like dealing with it. So their disposition, you know, they make they make mean uh, some mean greens, but you just don't. They their their attitude and their demeanor de deteriorate or it stops you from requesting their service. So let's let's move on. My time is running short. Let's move on. So. Um, as you see, types of spiritual gifts that we talked about uh, when we met up before, uh, it includes hospitality, leadership, discernment, this whole list. Now, the fact of the matter is both talents and gifts are given by God, our creator. So they work in conjunction with one another that it, 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 it helps when people invest in your talent, but it's great when people invest in your talent because they see something beyond your talent that is promising to a franchise, to a ministry, or just to your, you know, to your job, or just to your own personal being. It's that they're willing to invest in you because of what they see, the special sauce that 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 spirit that spiritual gift that was given to you uh that has been infused by the holy spirit that spills over onto your talent and makes you much more valuable than just the ordinary person okay so let's let's dig in let's dive in and let's let's look at uh, some key words is that all y'all with me y'all still here okay here we go. Am I am I where I need to be on the screen? Let's look. Uh, let me flip. OK, here we go. Uh, let's look at some key words. And I'm I'm, I'm almost I'm halfway through um, what I want to share with you tonight. This is the meat of what we want to talk about leading to this point. Uh, let's go to the first sentence in Matthew's um, chapter five, verse 14. And let's pick out some key words. Um, 14 says, the first sentence says, you are the light of the world. And I'm reading from my worship Bible. Um, if we were to look at the message, it says, message reads, you're here to be light. It, I've been asking this question 
and God will not allow me to release, be, re, allow it to be released from my. Focusing on this question for the past couple of years, two, three years, because I don't think we have it as of yet. I think we're still struggling and dealing with it. And the question simply is this. Do you know who you are? Let me say it again. Do you know who you are? Uh, and I'm not talking about, do you know, um, I'm not talking about your political status, if you're a Democrat or if you're a Republican or if you're an independent, um, if you're pro this and anti that. I'm, I'm not talking about your political status. I'm not talking about your position that you hold on your job. Um, I'm, I'm not talking about, because we, we have this, we, we have this tendency to reach out to social media uh, for them to confirm and affirm um, who we think we should be. And then we'll go off of what they say or what they don't say. And we will, we will allow that to define who we are. No, no, you can't depend on people to define who you are because one, the people out there didn't make you. The people on social media has no heaven or hell to place you in. The people on social media changes their mind every every three minutes. They post this and then they post any people that you're trying to get affirmation and confirmation from. And we fail to look to God to affirm and confirm who we are. So let's just do that. We're, we, we've stopped. We haven't looked at who we are through the eyes of our Heavenly Father. And here's how God describes, uh, is, is, has a description of you. God says that you are, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's Psalms 139, 14. God says that you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. That's in Deuteronomy 28, 13. God says that you are valuable. Remember, I was just talking about how someone has, has offered Patrick Mahone a contract for $503 million, $503 million over that. And that's what they say. But God says he's even worth more than that. So what you're not a Patrick Mahone, but you're worth even more than five hundred and three million dollars. That's just a label they put on him. God says that I own a cattle on a thousand hills. So 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 I own everything and you have ownership to everything. That's what God is saying. But this is what I love. Love about God. God says you are. Watch this. You are the only you that exists. Will ever. Wow. Out of out of all of the people that have come and gone and out of all of the people that are still that still remain here, which is, I believe, over seven point something billion people actually live and exist in the world today there is still only one of me and one of you you have people who who may even have the same name that you have but still there is only one god loved us so much that after he created us after he shaped us, after he placed gifts and talents in us. He then took the mold out, set you on the shelf and set you for a specific date and time to enter into this world. And then once he set you on the shelf and said, be born at such and such a date for me is, is March 7th, 1965. I sat on the shelf and up until March 7th, 1965. And God took the mold that he made me out of and broke it, crumbled it up and threw it away. Where I'm the only me that ever exists. And I have value to myself. You have value to yourself. Why? 
because there's only you that's here. Wow, that is powerful. Let's move on. Let's move on. Now, this right here, this we can shut the doors and we can we can turn off the lights and open the doors of the church um, because this one, this one, this word right here was very powerful for to me. Uh, Matthew five fourteen, and it says, "You are the light. You are just just read those those words right there." In the message version, it says, "Your." Let me let me get let me get to where I make sure I quote it correctly. Your message version says, "You're here to be light," meaning that you have been given a specific job. And a sign. And this is what you are here to be. Now watch this. Light is defined as. Wow. Light is defined as the natural. There's that word again. Natural. The natural agent. That stimulates sight. And makes things visible. Wow. Let me say that again. Light natural agent or the person who has been given a specific assignment to carry out that stimulates sight and makes things visible. So out of, in my worship Bible, it would say, you are the natural agent that stimulates sight and makes things visible. A light bulb should have actually went off in your brain because now you're understanding why people are in your space. Now you're understanding why people are attracted to you. Here's the, here's the kicker. <laughs> Let me tell myself, sometimes I don't really like people. I, I don't even want to be bothered with people. But that doesn't matter because... Once people see the light that is in you or the stimulating uh, factor that brings things into vision for someone, that's, that's why I, 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 I love my pastor. 